Hi guys! Welcome back to my channel, Making Here Yours Truly. Recently I spoke of doing a video of my favorite interior design books and even had a personal request. Hey Wanda C! Get ready to transform your space and up your design skills with the top interior design books every beginner needs to own. Let's get started. The first book and my ultimate interior design bible is this book. Okay, I've removed the book sleeve, but I will show a picture of the book here. Metropolitan Homes Glamour Making It Modern. Okay, I know not everyone is a glamour maximalist like I am, but this book includes all different variations of the style, so you can still use the basic guidance here in this book for all styles. Plus, there is an American style version if you lean more to a traditional slash contemporary style influenced from American culture and history. There's also a modern style book. And lastly, a renovation style book which really breaks down architectural changes and makeovers for your space. All books except the renovation book I found in abundance um, on Amazon. But uh, I did find the renovation book used on eBay. For all books here, I will not leave an Amazon link because my links will be for Amazon Germany and it's better that you find them on your country's Amazon and possibly in a language you prefer. The reason why I recommend all these Metropolitan Home books is how easy and detailed they break down the design style from elements that are important, objects of interest, um, color palettes, and scale, then also break it down for every room. Let me show you. Okay, let's get started here with concepts. Everything of concepts to the design that you need. And then they break that down with scale. It's broken down with color palettes. The element of luster you need for any modern glam design. How to work in antiques into the whole style and design spectrum. That you should always include a little Asiana, a little bit of Chinese, Japanese, Korean culture, working with multiples. I mean, you guys, it goes on and on, even featuring staircases that can help you achieve this look and style. How to work with drapery and what draperies you need. How to work with chandeliers. You always need that little pop of glamour. And it goes on and then further in the back, it breaks it down, like I said, from every room. Mirrors. Also here, object you need to always work with, with mirrors in different styles and arrangements. And then it starts with the rooms. And then they break it down how to style your living room. Goes into bedrooms, goes into kitchens. dining rooms and the examples and the visual inspiration is just so incredible you guys everything love this all the way down to your bathrooms and everything you need this is truly this is truly my number one ultimate design book guide it has helped me as I have matured into my style that exudes me. Everything in this book I have implemented in my home. It is truly my style, even how I dress. Okay, and this is an excellent segue into the next book. American Designers at Home. Again, I took off the sleeve, but here is a pic of the book. At the start of my Find Your Living Room Style video, I told you, go to your closet. 
to define your color and style preferences. Do you want to decorate your home in colors that you don't even wear or in which you don't feel comfortable? Or a style in which you don't feel beautiful, handsome, powerful, or confident? Fashion is decorating your person and interior design is just decorating your rooms. They should intertwine and connect. The motto of this channel, guys, if I love a designer's fashion collections and own a number of items from them, I want to uh, see how they live and decorate their most sacred private space, especially me coming from the fashion world. This book has helped me perfect one with the other. Let me show you some examples. Let's look at Tori Burch here. Her collections are traditional, but colorful prints and whimsically and decoratively detailed. Just think of her logo emblem on her accessories. The prints, the play of colors, the detail, but still traditional. Now Oscar de la Vente, who is an avid gardener, which shows in his collections and home decor. Think of the beautiful but delicate prints and full skirts of his dresses in rich floral colors like green and pale pink and his eye for detail if, if it's just a, a simple patent leather belt. Talking about pink and patent leather belts, everyone probably remembers this Oscar de la Rente dress. Then look at this room. You see all this floral detail, all the exquisite traditional detail, but then the black doors here. Why the black doors? Honey, the black doors are that patent leather belt. Carolina Herrera has always embraced rich reds in her collections and is known for her signature red lipstick. It is not surprising red is dominant in her decor. If you are the same, don't be afraid to put that red in your decor. Like I said, work up slowly with your favorite vibrant colors to test out to which threshold you are comfortable. Maybe you will find yourself also having the similar red curtains as Mrs. Herrera. And even though she is from Venezuela, her collections are very old European and her home looks like an old elegant villa, which could be in Spain, France, or even Italy. Betsy Johnson has always designed with fun and with a love of color and light. Yeah, not surprised that she has a totally pink house. That's why I gave her a little bit of a pink tab. Okay, Donna Karan. The simplicity of a Karan dress, but always with an organic detail. Just imagine a simple black Donna Karan dress that starts to gather here and then it somehow twists in itself on the waist and then just goes simply into the skirt. Look how serene, simple, and organic her home in Parrot K is. Look at this table. The Organic Perfect Imperfection. Wabi Sabi, right? This book was published in 2010. Her home is definitely older. Everybody's just been getting into this Wabi Sabi in the last couple of years. But she was already designing her home like that, just like her fashion collections years ago. Fashion most of the time steers interior design. Sometimes they develop and influence each other simultaneously. But if you want to know the next era of interior design, follow the fashion. Quick look at Jenna Lyons, old Brooklyn home. Everyone knows her current Manhattan apartment. This is when she was still creative director at J. Crew. I see that classic gray J. Crew suit in many shapes and forms with a pop of color and bold black accessories. What do you see? Okay, you guys, even though this is not a designer, I want to talk about right now. Do you notice the acrylic table see-through doesn't take away from the um, focus wall? Remember me telling you just printing out large prints that you can find on the internet? This is a famous picture of Elizabeth Taylor in, I think it was Cat on a Hot Tin Roof. And you can have that blown up in whatever color you want on canvas and then you have a great piece of artwork. And then Miss Trina Turk. When you have on a Trina Turk dress, you look like you just stepped out of a Slim Aaron's photography. She definitely has, and maybe you have also, a mid-century style and color palette. 
And lastly, Diane von Furstenberg, Princessin von Furstenberg. Yes, her first husband was a German prince. Let's visit her infamous rack dress. A classic simple dress for the first women who were working their way up the corporate ladder. The perfect dress professionally and socially. Also for the traveling stylish woman. The dress is basic enough to allow for an array of styling variations. You see that in her Connecticut home. Look how the architecture is very sleek, very simple, but it allows for the elaborate furniture. Great picture here of her with the leopard, a little bit of vintage mid-century, the beautiful glam, the different colors here, little collections of travels, little bohemian. Perfect Diane von Furstenberg. The bohemian traveler mixed with the Park Avenue, maybe even a woman with a little bit of wild side. All of these types of women feel equally comfortable in her wrap dresses. If you saw my Gabriella Crespi dining room makeover video, I was wearing one of my favorite vintage DVF wrap dresses with what? A wild colorful pair of animal print boots. Yeah, what does it say about me? Okay, you guys, let's move on to the next book. The next book, Elements of Style, Designing a Home and Life by Aaron Gates. Also an older book, probably about 10 years old, Mrs. Gates breaks down in her book how to decorate your home from start to finish. Literally, starting with the front door, entryway, and working through each room. If the first two books didn't really spark your interest, believe me, this book is for everyone. Let's dive into it. You see how. She explains creating a functional and stylish entryway, all her examples of what she did to achieve that, things that are needed. She makes you make a list of things you need, if you need storage or if it's gonna be more decorative. And then she even gives you examples here to help you define your style from your entryway. If you're a modern woman or man, then you wanna look for features and objects like these to put in your entryway. If you're more eclectic and you want to follow along this line, glamorous, traditional, and new country. She has it everything. And then she asks you to make a list. Think about it. She says here, think long and hard about what you have in your hands when you enter and leave the house. So just like I made you make a list in the bathroom storage, um, video, hack video. You always need to make a list of what your needs are, what your decor needs to functionally and practically bring into your life. Okay, the next section she goes on to, what I enjoyed here, is she also gives a lot of renters tips. So whatever room that you're decorating, she gives tips for you because if you don't own your place, then you have to modify what you change in your place. So I think these renter tips are totally great that she offers. And then even here, I thought that was so cute because she basically wrote this book when she moved into her new home and how she was decorating her process from the front door to the back door. And she even gives a list here of 10 great housewarming gifts that you can come and give somebody when they have a new house. I thought that was really cute. And then she's breaking it down to the living room. And when we get here in the living room, the best sofa styles for all different tastes. She just really makes the shopping for you very easy. Here, she even goes through the ultimate uh, fight, pillow fight, and answering the question of how to style with pillows in your living room and your sofa. How many you need? What are the sizes? What are the scales? Because we're always thinking we have either two, two less or two more. And then advising, they always use painter's tape and tape down the furniture pieces you want to buy. Do your layout with painter's tape before you ever bring a piece of furniture into your room. Every little detail to think about she has included in this book. Going on to the kitchen, she breaks down the, different, the differences between the different types of stone and their pros and cons to find the countertops that before you invest in them and spend your good hard earned money, what are the best ones that are suitable for your lifestyle? 
that she breaks that down for you, I find that so ingenious. One of the reasons why I went for granite in my kitchen. Again, defining your style in the dining room, she breaks it down again. Modern, eclectic, glamour, traditional, new country. So you can look for similar items when you're shopping, designing your dining room. Ah, she even breaks it down that if you have a home office, Look, breaking down your style. And I feel like sometimes your home office is a little bit um, decorated, a little bit different from the rest of your apartment or home. Because sometimes I need, I know for me, I need a little bit more um, inspiration, motivation. So my office is a little bit different than the rest of my apartment. Similar, but a little bit different because I, need to like be creative in that space. But again, she breaks it down to your styles, what you need to furnish your office. So everything, seriously, from front door to back, this is the best book for anyone right here. Okay, then, ah, the last book. But this book is truly the book. The next book is not just for the person trying to decorate their own home, but also for young professional designers starting in the business. Interior Design Masterclass features over a hundred top, top professional designers giving lecture information on the many aspects of the design process, from basic theory, structure, design, style, the actual process, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And there's even a chapter on dealing with clients and your commission. Let me show you some aspects I've marked in here on the, uh, in the chapter or the section of theory. I love this breakdown from David Mann, personalization. You guys, it just shows that it is so important that your home is really personal and shows a piece of you. So he gives a great, all the great tips in working on personalization. When you break it down here, when we start going into structure, there is a great here from Mark Cunningham. He breaks down achieving symmetry. I mean, and these are world known designers that have worked in the business forever. And even here from Etienne Coffinier, he tells you how to work out floor plans. What are the best tips for floor plans? Oh, I have so many tabs here because I love this book. Proportion from Capignon Platt. Working out proportion, what are the best ways to understand proportion? And proportion is not just a big sofa compared to a uh, little sofa. It's the proportion of all the elements in a space. Also here from uh, Jane and Joan Michaels, they talk about silhouettes, how the different shapes of the furniture, lighting, sculptures, tables, uh, um, the, all of the different chairs and everything, how the forms complement each other, developing the perfect silhouette. Also here from Juan Mantoya, scale again, how to get the right scale for a room. Windsor Smith, she talks about communication. These are the chapters of the parts talking about for people that are truly working as professional interior designers, the communication you need to set up with your clients uh, that makes a better rapport. And it, it just really gives you a lot of advice if you're starting out in business as well as if you're designing your own space. Here, Matthew White and Frank West, they talk about juxtaposition, you know, the the opposites, how they attract and how they complement each other. What do we have next? This is the section on style. Different designers here. Look, Madeline Stewart, she talks about trends and how to handle trends. And yeah, I think the typical professional designer, they hate trends. That's the new social media and ugh. I don't want to insult anybody, but, but trends are, you just gotta be careful with trends. There are changes in interior design, but then trends can just sometimes be so trendy. So she explains you here how to be able to recognize what is worth really 
changing in someone's decor, this quote, a trend that at least will stay around for a while. Even Harry Heisman, bringing in humor in your decor. He calls it humor, what do I call it? A whimsical piece, glamour. Look, when it comes to style, are we surprised that Kelly Wurstler was given the subject of glamour? Yeah, her design is the epitome of modern glamour. And then of course, this big section on elements and they break it down basically like the glamour, making it a modern a metropolitan home um, book that is just a different elements that you need to always include. They tell you how to source, where to find things for your clients. You guys, this book is truly a masterclass in a bound book. It is so great. I can't speak any more highly of it. These are my four interior design Bibles. And with these books, you have all the information and help you need, but I'm not finished. The Art of Home by Sarah Story. And I tell you, Sarah has a story to tell. This book is fairly new. I just got it this month. That's why the sleeve is still on it but I am truly, truly enjoying it. Sarah explained very well her design process philosophy, influence from her childhood growing up abroad. I'll read you something here on the foreword that really caught my attention, that her interior design is totally drawing inspiration from her extensive travels and passion for art and fashion. Her work combines bold contemporary art with antique pieces from every corner of the world. A woman after my heart. You guys, I know not everyone can travel extensively, but try to do as much as you can. Even the smallest of items collected during travel adds so much more interest and personality to your decor. One of the reasons I do the flea markets and vintage markets of the world here for you. We are not talking about spending lots and loads of money, but acquiring lots and loads of memories and personal style. Even though in the book she shows three client homes, the majority of the book is about her own home. You guys, I feel like you truly learn from a designer when you see how they live in their own private walls. She talks about collections and always a dash of whimsy. Yeah, where have you heard that from? She started out in just a one bedroom apartment in her townhouse in Gramercy Park and has over the years attained more and more other, I guess, apartments or other floors in the townhouse and each time having, each time expanding her living space, having to blend and make everything cohesive. Here, she described, I want to read this. I made some notes here because I don't know this book as well as my other books. And I said something, oh, I want to show you this first. I love her work with the balance of color. Do you guys not see the blue in the walls? Balance with the blue in the painting. Balance with the blue coverings on the chair. And then the dark orangey color in the ceiling. Balance with the doors. Balance with the floors. Balance back into the painting. And then the table here. All those colors balancing. Don't forget your color wheel. When you go in here on the color wheel, if you're working with this orange, this is what working with this darker orange here. What's the complementary color? Blue. So that's why this room is so inviting to the eyes. And I'm gonna, guys, I'm gonna show you another example that I really love the balance of color. Right here, this more red orangey area, bar area, and this turquoise. You guys, back to the color wheel. We're going to the red orange here, it's darker color. This is the same as the wood. Where's the complementing color? It's in that turquoise. That's why that is so inviting to the eye and works so perfectly. And even if you go to this side of the page, which is probably the other side of the room, she uses the royal blue. But don't forget, from the red orange, the broken complementary color is the royal blue. So I love when designers really work with, with, with complementing colors, not just using this 60, 30, 10 rule and they're just putting certain colors together. It has to be, there's a reason behind color theory and why colors are complementing each other and why colors 
neutralize each other, balance, balance off with each other, and that's inviting to our eyes, inviting to our soul. Look at this. You guys, this is a designer after my heart. You know my favorite color is purple. You gotta love a designer that can decorate with purple, and this is in her private home in Gramercy Park in New York. Okay, let's get to some other things. Here, I made a note about the character development chapter, yes. Character development chapter, she talks about how to truly curate with purpose and purposefully, okay? With purpose and purposefully. As a maximalist, this is very important. It's not just about having a lot of stuff, but diligently curating. Here, she says, I prefer a curated, edited, meaningful interior. For me, this means that each piece must matter. Otherwise, I'd rather not include it. Yes, sorry. Perfect pieces to me are functional. At the same time, I consider them art, which means that I see art as not only painting and sculpture, but also ceramics, objects, furnishing, and including the light fixtures. So she gives a very good overview on how to curate. And this is what I mean. Look at her light fixtures, how much she picks out artistic table lights, Look at this beautiful chandelier. And then when you look on this side, you see a wider view of the room. I'm quite sure this sconce has a balancing matching one on this side, which is how everything complements each other and becomes a piece of art. It's not just functional as a light, it becomes part of the aesthetics. Oh yeah, the repetition of the lats. This was so genius what she did here. Look you guys. She has the horizontal and vertical lats and visual or structure on the ceiling. Do you see how she used, I don't know if this is painted on the wall or if this is a wallpaper, but how she repeats that from the ceiling onto the wall. Now, of course, this wall could have just been beige colored or this wall could have just been plain, this rust maroon color. But really what makes it pop, what makes it cohesive is that she repeated the symmetry. She repeated that balance. Just little details like that make such a huge difference. And even if you flip over next page, the same room, making sure she has enough balance of color that just in the vase there, she is reflecting the same color, maroon color that's on the wall. I find that genius. She is truly one of fan. I don't know her personally. I know of her work, but so detailed, have it, I've never seen it. Oh, and Ashley, they, I found two videos showcasing her uh, townhouse in New York on uh, Quintessence and on Homeworthy. I'll leave links to those videos down below and you can really hear her talk and speak about her design process and philosophy. Okay, now we're into the second story. And uh, basically she describes from beginning to end how she renovated her Hudson Valley home, which was a very intense repair job. And then we're gonna get to the chapter of moods, which I read three times. Oh, but before we go there, even here, look at this, her balance of color. Here and here you have the sculptures, but she just brings it into the flowers. Most people would have thought, okay, put a trim on the, um, on the curtains or maybe put the same color maroon purple on as a pillow on the sofas. But no, she just makes it versatile to put a little bit more pop of color with the flowers, the same color that balances out. It keeps the eye flowing through the whole room. Love, love, love. Her chapter on mood matters. And she really goes in depth how personal environments are the ones that are comfortable, enjoyable, and welcoming. And then she focuses even more detailed on how lighting becomes a focal point and the art, and can be the main art of a room. She says exactly here, lighting sets a tone, which I see as one of the design's most important aspects. The right fixture can become just the right focal point. In this way, lighting, which is always utilitarian, also serves as a piece of art, a functional sculpture that performs an outsized role by setting a space's entire mood. 
And there was one more thing that I'm going to steal for my ideas here and clients. This corner uh, seating, uh, sofa, settee, bank, whatever you want to call it with the round table, the very typical like a uh, German thing, usually very wood looking, very somewhere found on the countryside. But everybody remembers that from their grandmother's house or great grandmother's house. And a lot of Germans even living in the city life in a more modern, you know, interior, they still want to have that traditional look. And I love how she is really just modernized it here and put a very, you know, new look on it. So that's something I'm going to suggest to some, some people here. Okay. I am enjoying this book so much that I ordered another copy. And this is where the giveaway comes into play, you guys. I am giving the lucky winner not only Sarah's book, but a personal note from me with 100 euros inside for you to spend on one of my ultimate favorite design books of your wish. These books can be very expensive and I want to help you achieve all the tools needed to design your dream space. That is why I started this channel. Giveaway is fully international. DHL delivers to all corners of the world. You must be subscribed to this channel and my Instagram account, Dare to Decorate. Leave a comment below, including your Instagram account, because I will contact the winner per DM on Instagram. I will also make a giveaway post on Instagram. If you choose to make a comment under that post as well, I will count that as a second entry. So you have a chance to increase your chances. The entry time will run exactly seven days. I will insert the end date and time here because I am not totally sure of the exact posting date and time of this video right now. You guys, Thank you so much for stopping by and for your increasing interest in my channel. And as always, yours truly, heart making. Bye. I can't find it. I know I marked it. Fuck, give me a second. Vincenzo, you'll recognize the chandelier. Remember that? The one made with the Pusta Plus? Uh, yeah, the dandelions. Yeah, she has that.